How do you fight off a wild prairie bear when it catches you unawares as you're out doing your researches? Um, usually if you kind of jump around and just kind of hide behind some plants, that'll do the trick. Jumping and hiding? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the undergrowth. This is where we speak to celebrated scientists and eminent educators about plants and pests. Let us embrace knowledge together on this expedition into mysterious realms. I'm Sebastian Eugene Bartholomew, and this is the undergrowth. On today's program, I have the distinct pleasure to welcome Mr. Andre Vargas, an entomology graduate researcher at the Royal Academy of Iowa State University. Today, we will be discussing two of humanity's great loves, prairie strips and ground beetles. Mr. Vargas is part of the PPEM department at the Academy, and as we all know, that's an initialism for Piddle Paddle and Enlightened Malarkey. Is that not so, Mr. Vargas? Um, pretty close, yeah. Pretty close, so yeah. we'll call it a win? Yeah. Indeed. Well, tell our bold assemblage of scientific adventurers out there the intriguing story of how you came to study coleoptera that kill things in patches of grass and crop fields. Hmm. Right, um, so <clears throat> uh, I grew up in small town Iowa, uh, kind of near the Neil Smith Wildlife Refuge, and that's kind of where I first got my first taste in prairies. Mm -hmm. um, and then throughout all of that, I've always been kind of, you know, interested in like nature. And I've always done like camping trips, backpacking trips. And at Iowa State, uh, I first came here doing animal science. Figured that I would want to, do, you know, go more into like the ecology side. Uh, so then I switched to animal ecology uh, for my bachelor's. And then I graduated in 2020 uh, during the pandemic. And then I started my master's in entomology and sustainable ag agriculture in 2021. Um, and the reason why I came back was um, this project called the, the Prairie Strips. And actually my advisor uh, from undergrad uh, is the head person, uh, Lisa Schulte Moore. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I came back is uh, the Prairie Strips have always interested in me. And honestly, uh, to study carabids or uh, ground beetles, uh, excuse me, uh, that kind of just came with the this, with studying uh, prey ships. Um, I'm not really, I wasn't an entomologist before. Before, uh, to be honest, uh, insects actually kind of made me feel kind of icky. But right. now I feel pretty good about it. You know? Yeah. Mm, good. Yeah, definitely. If I hold my hand no gloves, in a bucket of very hungry ground beetles. How many seconds until no flesh remains upon my bones? Uh, probably give or take 10 seconds. Oh, that's incorrect. I'm sorry. <laughs> the true answer is four seconds. We really? tried it right before we started filming. Uh oh. Not me, it was my stunt double Gerard. Uh -oh. He's on his way to hospital right now. Oh, Mary Greeley? Let's start with the basics. Yeah. What is a prairie strip? Uh, so prairie strips, uh, it's a farming practice that farmers can place uh, prairies uh, in areas where um, they can uh, hold water or help with water quality on their farm and it's also for uh, soil retention. Okay, so it has water quality benefits and soil quality benefits. What other kinds of benefits does a strip of prairie provide within a cornfield or a bean field? Right. Uh, it also helps with the biodiversity. Um, so, obviously, um, in Iowa, you know, there'll be more just grass waterways, which mm -hmm. typically there'll be, you know, uh, smooth brome grass, um, and they can also help with uh, the biodiversity of birds, small mammals, and of course, uh, insects. Okay. What kind of plants are found within prairie strips? What kind of uh, plants? Uh, yeah, so you find like the uh, great-headed uh, coneflower, uh, the grandma side oats, I believe is what it's called. Oh. Uh, what happened to peas. grandpa's side oats? Uh, it's just a small plant where the oats will be on the side. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. just like grandma. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, please, please continue. <laughs> um, and then you'll find uh, like big blue stem, little blue stem, and then uh, like compass plants. Oh. Very good. Mm -hmm. It's quite a different sight than rows and rows of corn or soybean. Yes, mm -hmm. very beautiful. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, let's switch to ground beetles. First, who grinds the beetles? 
Uh, nobody grinds the beetles. Well, then why are they called ground beetles? Uh, they're called ground beetles because they primarily just walk on the ground instead of flying all over the place. Very interesting. Yeah. So are there sky beetles? Uh, they're not. Water beetles? There are some water beetles. Tree beetles? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Grass beetles? Mm, no. Water beetles? Yes. I think you guys said. Well, I was talking about ocean water beetles versus freshwater beetles. Mm. Well, tell us more about a ground beetle. Why are they beneficial? Why does it matter? Right, uh, so ground beetles, uh, like you said, over, what did you say, 400,000 species? I believe so. Yeah, so... Quoting the internet. Right. Wikipedia? Perhaps. <laughs> Well, according to Wikipedia, you know, there's 400,000 uh, species of ground beetles and uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I did bring a box to show you if you would like to see here. Soon. Even square? Um, not square. Uh, there's some square Triangle? Shape. No triangle, no. Polydectahedron? Uh, no. Stavagus, you said all shapes. <laughs> well, okay, whatever you think of a shape of a beetle. Lies! Yeah. Entomological uh, lies! <laughs> Uh, uh, but they also make a good uh, biocontrol agent or beneficial uh, insect because uh, they're generalist predators and voracious predators. So they'll just kind of walk around everywhere, um, sometimes through chemical uh, scents or you know just because uh, either the sun is not out or is out, and they'll just walk around and find their, their next meal. Oh, so they eat the things that eat the farmer's crops? Uh, yes. Very good. Yep. And that's why they're considered beneficial. Yes, but not only the things that eat the crops, but also like weed seeds as well. Wow. Well, tell us about your research. Uh, so yeah, my research, uh, I place uh, these sw small wire cages into the ground, and then I glue a European corn borer pupate, frozen European corn pupate on these uh, cards, and then I just measure I set them out for two days and then I measure how many have been predated on or have been eaten. Uh, and then to get a sense of how many beetles are out there and how active they are, uh, I place these things called pitfall traps where there's just a small, uh, kind of like a solo cup into the ground and then whatever walks uh, on the ground and into the cup is what I catch. Very good. Mm -hmm. Have you ever caught anything besides ground beetles? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I'll catch uh, some bees, uh, I have caught a few butterflies, uh, but in insects, not only insects do I catch, but I've caught some frogs and mice. Oh, fun. I suppose after a while a little mix of frogs and mice and ground beetles get quite hungry in the bottom of those cups and right. battle, battle it out like an insect coliseum. Right, yes. Oh man. Which I have seen that before. Yeah, oh my. <laughs> I bet the mice win. Mm, yeah, generally. These are some of the ground beetles that I've caught. Wanted to showcase some some of the beetles that I have, mainly because we can see that we have some really small ones, but also some large ones like this Harpilus. I believe this is Calignosis. Yes, Harpilus Calignosis. And you can see that <clears throat> there's a wide variety of colors, and then um, what do you, what do we say? Not not shapes, but body. Body morphology. How about ah, that? Ah, morphology. Yeah, yes. morphology. Where does one go if they want to establish a prairie strip of their own or to find out more about these miracles of modern knowledge? Right, uh, so one could go to the uh, Strips web website. Uh, it's part of the NREM. Um, and you can uh, find all the information that you need on this website. Mr. Vargas. This conversation reminds me of those tranquil days that I spent in Lancashire working as a bouncer for the famous beetle fighting bars on Elytra Avenue. Mm -hmm. I remember the crush of the mandibles on the chitin, dodging straight drops of cantharidin as they flew through the air. The roar of the crowd as antenna were separated from their owner's head with a mighty claw grip. I can still remember when that craven pack of domestic beetles carried off a live chicken in the fading as they carried it into oblivion 
Is this how it feels to be an entomology graduate researcher, Mr. Vargas? Uh, as a chicken? Whatever your heart <laughs> says. Mm, I would say, in a sense, part of it. Yeah, sure. The mandibles clenching the chitin and crushing the life out of graduate students? Mm, I think more that uh, the mandibles are us as students and we are crushing our investigation and our research. Oh my, you're crushing the knowledge out of the carapace yep. of intelligence. I feel as though my ears are oozing intelligence after this enlightening discussion, Mr. Vargas. Well, this means it must be time to end our conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sebastian Eugene Bartholomew, and this is The Undergrowth. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. Right. Uh, there was uh, once where I tried eating a cricket, but it did not, it did not go well. Oh, wow. For you or for the cricket? Uh, both. Both of us. Yeah, that's the sordid tale of insect eating.